guys, welcome back to Samojo Homestead. Today I am working from home, just trying to get caught up on some stuff with the business, uh, trying to get estimates out, stuff like that. Um, definitely wearing my ghetto home attire. One of the challenges for me when I do work from home is staying focused on work. It is really hard for me not to get distracted with things that I would rather be doing, like homestead stuff. But I am going to try to have some time today to get our peas in the ground because it's about that time. You know, heading into fall, um, right now, I've got to try to get some work done so that I continue to have money coming in. That is one thing that is kind of unique to us small scale homesteading. We don't do anything out here that really makes us money. Um, the few, you know, dollars that we make off of selling livestock and stuff really just goes to help cover some of that feed. So we are by no means anywhere close to being a commercial type farm. Um, so we do have to support our habit, as I jokingly say. Uh, so that is one reason why Cass and I both do have jobs. Cass does like more of a direct sales kind of thing with Color Street. And then I obviously have my own business. Um, so a lot of that money just goes into allowing us to do this. But with that, it means it takes time away from this. And I have found over the last couple of years that um, I do still really enjoy landscaping. I don't want to downplay that. Um, the design aspect of it, the doing the installs and all of that. But my love for homesteading and everything that goes along with that is growing. And so I would, I would put them about equal right now. Uh, but I do have to make sure that I do continue to feed into that love of, of having my own business, doing the landscape thing. Um, because again, that is what supplies our monetary demands. All right, so it's pretty bright out here, but I decided to go ahead and do a garden update. Uh, we are semi in between still. We got some peppers that are left from the summer garden, but for the most part, and okra, but for the most part, we're pretty much all transitioned over to the fall garden stuff. But I found something I'm super excited about that I wanted to show you guys, but first, Let's take a look at what's growing right now and how it's doing. So our collards and cabbage are doing, for the most part, pretty good. Um, we have been fighting off the cabbage worms. We've been spraying it pretty heavy. And now that these guys have a pretty sturdy stalk on them, um, we're going to go ahead and cover them probably this weekend just to keep any extra activity off of them. Fun fact, in Japan, they will actually pay more for leaves that look kind of like this one than perfect leaves because it shows them that if the bugs are willing to eat it and will eat on it, it must be healthier than an undisturbed plant. Who knew, right? But anyway, we have broccoli over here. This is where our cucumbers were. They're coming along really nicely, really excited about that. There's only one plant that's really been kind of attacked heavily, but I think it's still fine. And then our okra, yes, our late okra. I still need to come out here and pick some for the day, it looks like, but um, these guys are really doing well. I just wish that we had gotten an earlier start on these things. Peppers on this back corner are still coming in strong, uh, still picking a ton of peppers. We will be watching the temps for pulling these things out, getting them in pots so that we can overwinter them. And we will be doing a video on that and how we do that. But it is really, really easy. Keep an eye out for that if you are interested. We only bought maybe half these plants this year. The other half were ones that we carried over from last year. And it, it really is amazing how much more production you get out of a two-year-old plant. And even more so, what I'm hoping for next year is three-year-old plants. So we got a random okra thing here. This right here is the most beautiful flower in the garden, I think. I love okra flowers. They're, I mean, they could be grown ornamentally for just for the flower. This is what I wanted to show you guys that I'm super excited about. We have another watermelon. So our watermelon crop this year came in good and then started getting blossom end rot, which is a sign that there is a calcium deficiency. 
So what we did is crumbled up toms and put them around the base of the plants and the plants really rebounded nicely. Like I thought that we were pretty much done with them. Like I didn't think that they would be able to bounce back, especially after several of them had just completely died off. And now we have several watermelon on these vines. I don't know if they're going to be able to ripen fast enough. It really depends on how soon we get really cold, but we're going to see. Um, our melons are kind of kelp. Cantaloupe are right at the end, so they're kind of dying off. We still have a couple coming in. Here, I am going to go plant some sweet peas. Our green beans are pretty much phasing out. They have really declined just in the last two days. So we're going to go ahead and get those planted in the same spots that the green beans are planted and what i'm hoping is the little bit that's left on the green beans will offer just enough shade to help cool it down enough until our temps start dropping which we're getting pretty close to being consistently in the 70s we're still probably 50 50 hitting 80s and then 70s for our high temperatures i'm just hoping that it will eliminate some of that stress with the protection of the green beans that are phasing out so let's go do that oh. What I like to do, whether it's a stick or screw or whatever, is find about where an inch is, mark that somehow, and then stick it down in there so I know that I'm getting them in at the right depth. All right, so sweet peas or sugar snap peas, they're a labor of love for me. The fact that I'm planting this is proof that I love my family. What I mean by that is I don't really like these guys. I'm not a huge fan of sweet peas or sugar snap peas. I'm, I could take them or leave them. My son, my daughters, my wife, all of them love sweet peas. So I plant these mainly for them. They really like just coming out here and picking them and eating them fresh. Um, funny story, Josiah actually will only eat them out of the garden. He will not eat them if they're on the plate. And that's the case with a lot of things. He'll come out here and pick peppers. Thankfully, he knows which ones are sweet. And he'll just eat them out here. But you put them on the plate and he won't even touch them. I don't know. I guess it's just, oh, okay, that is really cool. A lizard just grabbed something in front of me. <laughs> the uh, battlefield of the garden going on right here in front of me. But uh, maybe it's just like the novelty of being able to pick it and eat it right there rather than have it served to him on a plate. Either way, he's getting his vegetables when he comes to the garden. So I really try to promote him coming out here to the garden so that he'll get his vegetables and eat them. So they will grow up this, but sweet peas will really only grow vertical. And so if you're really wanting something to give that show of arching over, sweet peas are not your best choice for this. Um, and we're not really going for that effect. Um, they probably won't even get high enough to really reach the top, but sweet peas, once they get to that arch, they'll actually continue to grow vertical and continue to look for something. Whereas green beans will just sort of lay over the top and continue to grow. And so they really did a good job of giving us that effect that we wanted and created that whimsical type uh, look going into the garden. The other thing that is really important to us for trying to get as many beans growing or peas growing in this area as possible is we bought topsoil from a local place and I'm not sure they gave us topsoil. It's definitely more like fill dirt. There is just absolutely no good value to this dirt at all. And so we are really trying to help the dirt, get some nitrogen in there, get some nutrients in there. Uh, and beans are a really way of, good way of doing that. They are a nitrogen fixer. They'll draw nitrogen up to the surface and then actually release it through their roots. So I'm hoping that by planting all of these beans and all of these peas in here that we will start to amend this soil some naturally. Now we will do some other things to amend it. We tried to grow a squash on here this year with the beans. Squashes did not do well. They were too weak. And I think that that was probably because the dirt really didn't have anything in it for them. Bigger seeds like this, they really need to be soaked before they germinate or, or are able to germinate. So because of that, 
I always try to plant them right before they're calling for rain. Now they are calling for rain later on this week. So I'm really fingers crossed, hoping that we get rain that's gonna just drench this and soak them. You don't really have to do that. It just helps to speed up germination if you soak them and soften up those outsides. And it kind of, it promotes and sends a signal to the seed or the pea in this case, that it is time to start growing. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these planted in here because I do need to finish up so I can get back to work with company stuff. Uh, hope you guys have a great week and be blessed.